All right, so let's pivot. We'll go from the guys who run around on the outside to the guys who <laughs> run up the middle and, and do other things. So Sony Michelle was was a lot. You know, people love Sony Michelle. We have a rift between the three of us. I, I think I like them a little less than you guys. You guys like them a little more, possibly. Um, but. There's people in this in the dynasty community that put him as maybe having the most productive rookie season out of out of uh, all the running backs, and this will probably put a damper on that parade for a minute. It has to. Um, and like I said, you can't love anybody getting a procedure right now on a knee. Yeah. Mm. Like, nah. Um, but the <laughs> biggest beneficiary, you know, outside of Gronk, maybe on this whole entire thing, to me, even with you know with Sony and those receivers all having issues, is Rex Burkhead. Sure. Like. Rex Burkhead is the utility knife for the Patriots. And he's been the theme of the weeks so ever since his Sony Michelle. I mean, Michelle. How, how could you not be? And I know that I'm probably pointing out some obviousness here. Well, but. it's obvious now because everybody's all over it, but nobody was on Rex before you were on Rex. Last oh. year, way in J- the preseason. January. I, January. I you, some Rex. you were on the Rex because I'm sure our longtime listeners will remember the trade offers that Casey and I got into and <laughs> yeah. you kept trying to get Rex off my team. <laughs> I was like, what's up with Rex? Who's this Rex guy? Yeah, yeah, I was the like, deal's why off. You, why you keep tra- yeah, we were we were really getting close and every time Jay, uh, Casey kept trying to throw Rex like, All right, well, in. I'm going to need Rex too. <laughs> I was like, what's the deal with this Rex guy? You keep trying to get off my team. I had deals off. I got to go to Got to go figure this thing Jason out. Jason has an aunt who knows. Yeah. Oh yeah. She <laughs> was his, uh, his, his vice principal or something like that. <laughs> Good guy. Loves him. They love the Patriots just because of how awesome Rex Burkhead how is. How could you not? Humblest, nicest dude ever. Just the star of the high school. Just would talk to anybody. Utility <laughs> knife. The, Rex. Utility the, knife. The Burkhead. utility knife. The battering ram. Whatever. The battering whatever ram. Whatever you need him to do, he's got you. Mm-hmm. Currently at the 123rd ADP. That's Gotta going like up. That's right. going up. That's going up. That is that is the yodeler on the <laughs> <Yeah>. prices. <laughs> <right. laughs> <laughs> um, so, Dion Lewis was was a they lost Dion Lewis. It's a bummer for them. Dion Lewis did a lot for this team last year, but Rex, I think, really is everything you need out of this. Patriots Whenever he was playing right and healthy. He was scoring touchdowns. Right. You got scoring no Edelman out. for four games. Scoring out of the backfield, taking handoffs. You got a, a lot of in questions. The red marks, zone package. But the one constant is about to be Rex Burkhead, as long as he can stay healthy. He hasn't been he also has not been the poster child for health. A lot of ifs on this team. But Rex had more targets on less snaps receive on receiving routes than Deion Lewis did last year. Um, and he was fourth in from all the running backs in target percentage when he was out there. All right. Good stat. So there's maybe he's not running. He doesn't have a lot of production from the actual slot, as you would like to say, like, oh, well, Edelman's out. Maybe we'll see some Rex in the slot. But in general, Rex can get out there and run some routes. When he had receiving routes, he was the fourth highest percentage wise targeted uh, running back out of all the running backs um, and, and, and out targeted on less snaps on than Deion Lewis. Deion Lewis didn't have a ton of uh catches last year but rex burkhead was also in and out of the lineup missed a decent amount of games so for all that to come together is is eye-opening for me and to just there is there isn't a whole lot of receivers going on here the running backs at this point are white james white which you know good good receiver Mm -hmm. but probably not the best running back jeremy hill not known for his receiving ability and old mike gillisley not known for his receiving ability I don't know which one of these guys is going to be the guy, but I know that Rex Burkhead is going to be the guy for as long as they need him to be. He's definitely for as long the as he's healthy. Most der- most versatile piece because he right. can take the balls in the gut, and he can run it from under center or out of the shotgun. And then he's like like all those all like he said, he's awesome in the passing. He's a good game. receiver. And James White open. doesn't bring doesn't give you that rushing ability the same way that, that Burkhead does. Right. I don't believe. Um, I think James White's probably a, a, a solid little piece to get in this offense too. I mean he. He's been paid. He was fourth on the team in targets with 72 last year. Cooks and Amendola, who were ahead of him, are gone. And 177th uh, ADP. ADP for James White. Yeah, I don't I don't hate it. I mean, he's just always left for dead, and then somehow just he's going to score some PPR points. He's going to get his run, especially with Sony being a little bit hurt. And, you know, maybe Sony doesn't miss any time, or maybe Sony tries to come back too soon and misses right. the rest of the season. Ooh. I'd rather have Rex, but... James White's probably a little bit cheaper. Right now, it's James like, White's right, someone a lot of it. Right cheaper. now, it's right now it's a, like a fifty some round disparity, and and by the time August fifteenth rolls around, it'll be a much larger disparity than that. 
Well, here's the thing with Rex. You look at last year was his first year with the Patriots. In the first couple of weeks of the season, you know, you had a, tons of running backs over there and you got to Gillisley with the big first week and all that stuff. But, <clears throat> excuse me, you got 10 weeks into the season, Rex hits his stride. I don't know if it's because other guys are hurt and they cleared the path or he got into the playbook and they really, you know, got used to what they wanted to do. Maybe week nine was their bye week because it goes from eight to 10. And maybe after the bye week, they were like, watch this, the Rex show. Obviously well, he's finally got healthy. Well, I mean, you, he was healthy and you had receivers missing time. Right. And then down the stretch, Deion Lewis took off. But just if you're looking at his game log from last year, the rushing line and the receiving line individually, uh, don't really blow you away. But when you put it together and you're right. like, Oh, that's the same guy, but getting both of these things like week eight, he gets seven catches for 68 yards. I mean, that's a decent day from a wide receiver. Um, but then week week ten he comes in and he's got ten carries, only thirty six yards and no touchdowns. So you're like, oh, okay, whatever. But he goes three for twenty seven in a touch, so he saves your day there. And of course, you know you paid nothing for him last year. And week eleven doesn't do a whole lot on the ground, doesn't do a whole lot through the air, gets a couple catches, doesn't kill you, doesn't cost you the week, definitely doesn't win it for you. But then weeks twelve through fifteen really comes to life. And of course, with twelve through fifteen, like week fourteen and fifteen, Deion Lewis is already do, was doing De- work. De- De- Deion Lewis at that point is your wild horse running back. Exactly. For so team. while Deion Lewis is in there getting twenty something carries a game, that Rex is already doing work. Thirteen carries for fifty yards and a touchdown. Two two catches in a touchdown and but like two catches for three yards in a touchdown so like he's in the, he's he's basically right. in the goal line package he's and the patriots live in the red zone that's why i wanted to get at here like the patriots live in the red zone so the next week he's got 12 carries 78 yards two touchdowns and then he gets five carries for eight yards nothing but a touchdown and then five catches for 45 yards right you know it's just like yo rex played 10 games had eight touchdowns that's what i'm saying like the the patriots live in the red zone this is and a, this is their utility it now. goes back to saying why you know you're taking these why you would rather take stabs on these dirt cheap receivers Mm-hmm. That you know, then you would rather take a bunch of stabs on some other dirt cheap receivers down the line because the team, Patriots yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah, like the Patriots are going to get to the red zone. Gonna, is production? They're right? going to score points. They're going to get. And they're green. most they're they're def and they they come away when they get in the red zone. They come away with touchdowns. And right? all that stuff just leads back to kind of what me and Jay Wayne were saying in the utility knife area, and that these receivers aren't around right now. Those receiving stats are excellent from this guy. However you want to chop it up, if you want to just give them the raw numbers or the percentages of targets right. or the percentages of out, you know, catching uh, Deion Lewis on less uh, targets, all of those things lead to that. I think he's a huge beneficiary of and, you know, it's an easy thing to connect the dots of saying, well, Sony Michelle's out of there. So you got to like Rex Burkhead right now. He just had a procedure. But there's a lot more yeah. that kind of goes into that. Why you should be liking Rex Burkhead. I like it. And from a dynasty startup perspective, you know, Rex just turned 28 years old and there's going to be that commingling if you will of redraft value and Sony Michelle's hurt and sounds racy well sorry I'm a, I'm a property manager it's co- cohabitate two, two two different bank accounts and you're not supposed to commingle the funds <laughs> anyway so like people you know dynasty startup <laughs> What Rex might do for you this year, so like you said, you don't know if Sony Michelle is going to come in there and crush it. You don't know if he's going to come back too early, miss the whole year. You right. don't know. You you don't. He might be moving slow for a month of the season. Obviously, they don't just give everything to one back. Jason's a believer in James White, especially on his value. I can't hate on that. So, but to Casey's point, the receivers are depleted. So I like what Rex Burkhead is. There's no doubt about what he's going to do. He's going to get in there. He's going to produce fantasy points. I don't know if I'd really be. I, when this, all of these injuries shake out and these wide receivers get cut and Sony Michelle's injury comes through and the ADP data comes in, like I, I'm not going to go heavily invest in him in a startup because you're not, I, I don't know what you're going to get past six weeks or this year or what. You know, it may be great. He's only 28, only, you know, he's a utility knife. He might be great for three years on this team or, you know, they close up shop and the coach and the, and the quarterback's gone after yeah. this year. You know, you don't know. Uh, well, that, that, that's, that's a big thing is the coach and the quarterback, seeing what happens there. But I, I, I guess my point being is that there, there's no receivers coming to town to be the saviors for these guys. Adelman will come back after Not week, yet until they after, sign Dez. After week four. I, I don't, you like Dez. I don't like, you like Dez to the Patriots. I don't love Dez to the Patriots. I just think he would throw off everything that they got going on in there. And I don't think he's going to confide to what, the, he's not going to buy into what the Patriots are selling. He's, well, that's what they said about Randy Moss. No, and then he comes no, in no, there no. These are two records. Des Bryant and Randy Moss have two totally different attitudes on how to play the game. 
Right, and there are different stages of their career. I mean, Randy Moss Randy scored Moss 21 was, touchdowns. He, Randy Moss was washed up in Oakland. Well, yeah, but... He was a forgotten man. I don't like the Dez fit in Love New the England. Dez. Although it, it makes some sense, I just don't like... That's not the pretty sure way. They just signed Eric Decker for 75K right. guaranteed, and Dez wants a three-year, four-year deal. No, Dez wants a one-year... That's why he didn't sign with the Ravens, because he wants a one-year deal so that he can show you that he's still good, and then so somebody could pay him long-term. Yeah. Come on over, Des. He's not coming over. <laughs> Regardless, Side back, bar. back to yeah, back to what I'm saying. Like there is no, in my opinion, there's no wide receiver coming to save the day. Edelman will come back. He's he was injured a year before. He came. He had some PEDs. Came back. He's 32. He had some PEDs. He's you know so. With what Rex can do for this team, I think he'll be fine as long as he's healthy, scoring points in your lineup. Like I don't need to heavily, necessarily heavily invest in him, but if he's sticking around in spots where he's trusty, I think, I he's, think trusty. He's, a, he's a decent stab to take right there. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to reach for Rex by any sense of the imagination Dude's here. Dude's 215 but pounds because of the because, right. You were questioning yeah. his and battery. He's 28, but he yeah. has like less than 300 total carries. In he's his a career. young 28, and he's 215 but with, pounds. With the receiving upside and with what the Patriots do, and they're going to trust him at the goal line. Uh, clearly, they trusted him at eight TDs when he was healthy to be, you know, their utility knife. And I think it's going to continue to translate again because of the no receivers. And look at this hodgepodge of <laughs> running backs that they have. <laughs> Who knows if Sony Michelle's actually going to be worth a shit this year? Yeah. And I mean, I don't hate James White, but I'm probably was never investing in him before. Maybe if he's hanging around, I pick him up, put him on the bottom of my squad. But I like Jeremy Hill and I like Gillisley as much as the next guy. But I mean, who who knows with those two guys? So. Well, that, I think we saw that. Like Deion Lewis proved trusty to the coaching staff, and they gave him the wor- workload. And, and when, on top of that, but Rex was still you just you that's know, what I, you, no, I'm not Rex say, is still doing his um, thing. But yeah, but like that's but it's I was comparing him to Gillisley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know sure. that Gillisley worked his way into not even being right. Uh, you know, dra- dr- dressed on a on right. a Sunday. You know, but to my save thirty five k day. To my point <laughs> is is saying that. Smart. They they found a guy who was their workhorse, and they were still using Rex and still getting quality production. And you weren't scared to start Rex at all Mm-mm. at that point in time. I mean, we had plenty of teams where we have Rex from last year, and we're trying to sell him a couple months ago. Nobody would give us anything for him, and now I'm not. He's hanging out with me. Yeah, good yeah. luck. I'm not selling him now. This is what the Patriots do. They've got a very, they've got a slew of capable dudes who are all very injury prone, and uh, <laughs> they just rotate through. Whoever's healthy is going to get some work, especially if it fits the game plan. And right. it's going to be a bit of a hair pulling out situation. But the point I think is, is to take take these guys, who's, whoever's cheapest, mm-hmm. get a couple of them on your team because it, when they do get their time, there's production to be had. I so agree. I think that's, uh, I think we've beat these Patriots to death. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break. I'm out of beer, so we'll re up there. And I'm out we'll of coffee. I'll chug this coffee. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just so jacked up right oh, now. Oh, boy. Shouldn't be. We're about to be on. Had too All much right. coffee too fast. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. 